All right then, so I thought I'd talk a little bit now about component life cycles and the different methods we can hook into during a component life cycle because every component in your React application is going to go through a life cycle. It's going to go through a mounting phase, an updating phase, and an unmounting phase. So I'm just going to go through this interactive diagram with you and I'm going to leave the link to this down below so you can check it out yourself. So first of all, we have the mounting phase. This is when a component is first created and first mounts the DOM. So in here, we have access to several different lifecycle hooks and they fire in order. So the first one is this constructor right here. Now, this is not necessary to call, but it offers another way to set the state of a component. Much like we set the state directly, uh, we can do that inside a constructor as well. Uh, again, we don't have to do that. So the next one to fire is this get derived state from props. And this exists for one purpose only, and it enables a component to update its internal state as the result of changes in our props. So it triggers on first render, and then whenever we receive updated props from a parent component, it's going to trigger as well. So we receive those props, and we receive the current state of this component where the method is called, and we can compare the props we receive to the current state if needed, and then return a new state object if we want or null for no changes. It's not really often used. So then we have the render function right here, and this is where React takes our JSX code and prepares it to render to the DOM. And it's the only one required lifecycle method in a component, and it will generally return some form of JSX. Okay then, so after that one, we get component did mount down here and this fires once the component first mounts and it's a good place to get any external data from a database like firebase and we'll be doing that in a series up and coming in the future so that's the mounting phase when the component is mounting the dom initially all right so let's move on to the updating phase now so first of all we have this method right here we have get derived state from props so as we said before this triggers when either the state updates or props received change and we receive the next props and the current updated states. OK, so then we have should component update and this receives the next props and the next states and we can compare the old props with the new props and the current state with the new states. So we can return false here if we want to prevent the component updating and re-rendering. So you could check the new props against the old props and only return true if they're different and we need an update and re-render. An alternative to this is to use pure components in React. We won't dive into these now, but we will maybe have a look at these in another series in the future. Okay, so then we have the render method here, which again renders the template to the DOM. And then after that, we have get snapshot before update. Now, in here, we get read access to the DOM before the change is actually committed to it and we can get current values from the DOM if need be, such as the window position, and then return that inside the method. And that return value is passed to the final update hook. All right, so we can use it. So then down here we get component did update, and that is called after the template is rendered to the actual DOM. And at that point as well, we get write access to the DOM, and it's a good place to get any external data from a database if needed. But word of warning here, if we update the state inside this hook, we could get an infinite loop and that's not really something that we want. Now, a lot of these different lifecycle hooks we're not going to be using. We'll be using a couple of them as we go forward and we'll see examples of how they can be used exactly. For the most part, we'll be using render obviously in every component to render our templates. We will be using component did mount to get data maybe, sometimes component did update, and very rarely we'll be using this one as well, get derived state from props. But what I'll do now is just jump to the code, I'll get our application up, and I'll just go through a very quick couple of examples. So I'll go to the root component to do these, and what I'll do first is component did mount. So we can add that just above the render method. You can add it anywhere inside the class. It doesn't really matter, but I'll add it above the render method. So it's called component did mount. And this fires, remember, when the component first mounts the DOM. So I'll say console.log in here, component 
mounted. All right then, so if I save this now and view this in a browser, if we go to the console, I'm gonna refresh, you'll see when we first load it up, the component is mounted to the DOM and we see that logged to the console, all right? And it's only ever gonna be logged once because the component is only mounted once until we refresh the page, right? Or delete that component and then re-render it at some point. All right, so that's component did mount. Uh, the next one, component did update. So remember, this fires when we get a change of states or props. So what we can do is we can take in here the previous props, the old ones that we had before the change, and also the previous state, the ones that we had before the change. And I'm going to open up these curly braces. And inside here, what I'll do is I'll console.log. And inside here, we'll say component updated. And we'll log out now the previous props and the previous states. So we'll say console.log prev. Oops, we've spelt console wrong. And we want to log out prev props and prev states. So this is the props and the state before the data was updated. So we'll see those in the console. So let's try this out. So again, if we refresh, we only get component mounted at the minute because the component hasn't yet updated. It's not received that new state or props. But if we add something else to the state, then in fact, we'll just delete something from the state because that's still changing it. I'll delete this. Then you can see component updated and that function fires. And in here we have the previous props. Now, obviously this is empty because this root component doesn't have any props inside it. It passes props to other components, but it doesn't have any props in itself. But we also see the previous state. And if we open it up, we can see this array and it has three things in it. Now, obviously Yoshi isn't showing in the template because of the age. And we did that if check before to only show ninjas that are over 20. So that's not showing. But before Ryu and Crystal were, now only Crystal is. So the current state is different from the previous state. And if we make another change, then we're going to see the previous state here now has only, oops, I need to open this up, now has only two objects in it. But now the current state has only one object in, Yoshi, even though it's not showing. If we add a new one, I'll say Mario, age 35, and black belt, press enter, we can see now the previous state was only one, which was Yoshi. And if we delete Mario again, we should see two, and Mario should be there as well. So every time we do this, we can compare the previous state with the current state and then do something dependent on that if we wanted to, all right? So there's a couple of the lifecycle hooks in action. Again, I'll leave a link to this down below so you can see each of the different lifecycle methods and where they occur. And again, we will be using some of them in the future to do different things like go out and grab data from a database or do something when a component updates, all right? So in a nutshell, that, my friends, is Lifecycle Hooks.